So to get started into what we're doing today, we have, like I said at the first, we have problems. We've got all these different issues, problems that we face throughout our life. At the moment, I've got an internet that has, or a computer that has no access to internet. It just died. Shows that I'm connected, but I, I try to ping the, the router, nothing. Try to ping out past the router, nothing. And so who knows what the issue is. And I will, it'll get itself figured out. It normally does takes about an hour for it to wake up. It got to love the, uh, the cable internet system here in, <laughs> in the town that I am at at the moment. But anyhow, so how is using positive thoughts able to beat what your problems are? And that, that it's a it's a tough question. I get it, but it were, that question is very very important. And the key of it is the positive thoughts portion of it because we've all got problems. It doesn't matter whether it's a good problem, bad problem. We have some type of decision. We can always use positive thoughts to actually pull up the answer. We can find that solution. And so. Wanted, that's what I wanted to talk about today. And a lot of people may ask, well, why, why po use positive thoughts at all? Why, are, why do we need to be doing something like that? And that's, so why positivity? Why do you need to have positive thoughts? What is that? What does having a positive thought do that a pessimistic thought won't? To have a quote unquote realist thought, what would that keep? Uh, what would that be as a as a barrier to, to as opposed to having the thought that anything is possible to have the thought that we will find that solution to have the thought that even if we fail that's okay because we're still learning and any of the other positive thoughts that you could actually come up with well first off having a positive thought opens up so many more possibilities if you're if you're caught up in in negative self-doubt and negative thoughts like that, you're going to have more of a scarcity mindset. You're going to look at things and see what you don't have as opposed to what is actually available to you. You're going to worry about like scarcity of money. If you're worried that you don't have enough money and you're just consumed with that whole line of thinking, you're going to see what you can't buy as opposed to the fact that you have a little bit of money that you can actually get what is needed in your life. I have plenty of money for everything that I truly want is a, a great statement that proves that point. If you are have a positive mindset, you're going to find exactly what you're wanting to find. You're going to f acquire whatever type of money you think you need to have. That's what allows us to be able to keep going is because when we have that thought, we have the, the positive thoughts that, we, that we're that we showing here. You see that, say like if you're, when you're young and poor, like, and we all were at one time, we just, we struggled to get just enough to, enough to have two quarters to rub together in our pocket. But there are times when you need something and you truly want it, and so you're going to find a way to be able to get that particular particular item. So like cigarettes, when I was younger and in the Navy, I, I smoked cigarettes. And during that time, there was plenty of times that in between payday on the 1st and payday on the 15th, that somewhere about seven days, about halfway between that, I would run out of cigarettes. And what would I need to do? I didn't have any money. I just spent all the money on bills and all that. And I was, how, what do I, how, where do I get cigarettes from? Well, you found ways of acquiring enough money to get a pack of cigarettes or to get a Coke or get whatever it is you're wanting to get. You were able to find that money. Why? Because you were able to you have plenty of money for everything that you truly want. And that's the key word is what you want. It's not necessarily what you need, but what you truly want. Because and a lot of people will fight back on that whole line of thinking. And 
that line of positive thought. It, that's because when you're, a lot of people want to say, well, I, would, I, I want a million dollars. No, actually, you don't want a million dollars. If you wanted a million dollars, you would do what it takes to get that million dollars. Just wanting something isn't the key, but the fact that you want it, you're going to achieve what it is you're after. When you have the positive thoughts that correspond with that whole line of, of thinking. So it opens up all your possibilities. When you are being a, have a positive mindset, when you think of what's, uh, what's possible and you start acknowledging that what's possible, you're going to actually have a better chance of achieving what you're after. So it also, you know, a lot of, what's the alternative? You want to look at the life as doom and gloom? I mean, really, come on, man. That's not really all that great of a means of living. And that's proof. Look at how many people walk around today with the thought that their life is crap and that, they, you know, they're always being victims to something. A lot of them complain about, you know, about capitalism being, you know, making victims of everything. And no, man, it's <laughs> the only reason why you're suffering through, through capitalism is because the system is a natural naturally occurring system and so when you're allowing when you think oh i'm just going to give up and i'm not going to work because it's not even worth it well then you're not going to have the money for the great things that you want and so you want to sit around and complain that it's not fair that you have to work for the rest of your life guess what if you we didn't have capitalist uh, system you would still you would have to work three times harder than if you did just with the capitalist system, you're going to have to work. Do you want to be working just to be able to go out every day to dig up a potato so you actually have one little bitty, itty bitty potato available to eat for that day? Or would you rather be able to just go to the store and go get yourself, you know, a, a, a meat chicken or, you know, something from a, from a fast food joint with some fries and a Coke? And have all that. And it cost you, you know, 15 bucks. Sadly, these days, it's just really stupid expensive. In my thought line of thinking. So how do we, ch say you decide, you know, I, I, you're right. This Somehow my magical, uh, uh, magical talking within the last, you know, five, ten minutes has somehow automatically, boom, you've changed your thoughts. And you are wanting to have a more positive line of thinking. I mean, I, I know I'm amazing that way, but still, it, it, it might be a, li a, a little bit of a stretch. So how do you change your view? What if you're going through life and or going through your day and you're realizing, God, man, I'm just really freaking negative today. What is, I am a negative Nancy. What is the, what do I need to do to change my thoughts? I want to have a pe better line of thinking for just for the day. Who cares about tomorrow? Tomorrow you can be, you know, you can be Oscar the Grouch for the rest of the day if you want. That's fine. No, nothing wrong with that. So, but today you would like to have a better line of thinking. Well, not right, sweet, awesome. So, what do you think would be your first step? First is, and it's, a lot of folks won't will think, well, just start thinking positive thoughts. No, 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 no. Why do you want positive thoughts? If you think it's going to make you feel better, yeah, yeah, it will. This is one of those things where you actually can make yourself feel better because they are your thoughts. So you can, if you're tired of being, you know, grumpy and you're tired of having the attitude that you're having, then yeah, change your thoughts. If you think that all of a sudden it's gonna magically eliminate all the problems in your life, no. You get positive thoughts or negative thoughts, you're gonna have problems in your life. You will forever have problems in your life. Even the richest of the rich have problems. The poorest of the poor have problems. And you, being middle of the road, being mediocre man, you, you've got problems. You're always going to have problems. And the problems are going to have problems. And when you make create solutions to those problems, that solution is going to just make more problems. So you can either look at all the, what I just said and go, well, what's the, what's the use? 
Or you can go, huh, all right, that's a good adventure. Let's try this one out. You have the that ability. You have the the ability to change your attitude. And the reason that you change your attitude is because your thoughts make your emotions. Thoughts create your feelings. Feelings create your actions. Actions create your results. So yes, your thoughts create your results. If you're tired of having failure after failure after failure, change what you're thinking. Change how you're approaching that problem. Change how you are thinking about that problem and see what happens to your life then. So how do you change your view? First off is mindset. I mean, come on, mindset is probably one of the most important things. If you think you're going to fail, you're going to fail. If you think you're going to run into a crap ton of problems, you're going to run into a crap ton of problems. That's all there is to it. It is all dependent upon you. Are you going to be able to do something or are you not going to be able to do something? That you have to decide what is, what's the possibility? What's going to go on? What's not going to go on? If you are willing to change the, the, the mindset, you're building up a foundation for success down the road. If you look at any of the richest people, they have the ability, they have the thoughts, the mindset of this is possible. What happens if you run into a problem? We'll figure it out. We'll get it. We'll, the object, the obstacle is the way, as, as the book by Ryan Holiday says. You have the, the means to overcome any problem. The question is, are you willing to use those means, or are you just going to sit in the mud and whine about it? So be aware of the negative thoughts. And that's the next big thing. When you are going through a problem and you come to a, to a obstacle in your life and you're wondering, well, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to get past this? Well, that's up to you. How do you get past this? And you need to pay attention to the thoughts that you are having. Actually do some serious thought work about what's going on in your world. Because when you come up with a solution to that problem, you're going to find that your world works a lot better. You're going to have a smoother ride through life when you actually are getting rid of those negative thoughts. Now, are you going to be able to get rid of all negative thoughts? No, no, no. Our brain is designed to look for the negative. But we also have the this big, you know, see all the skin up here? That is a good representation of your of the prefrontal cortex of your brain, all right? For me, I mean, I'm, I'm losing, uh, losing the hair. So about halfway through, halfway back of my, uh, my head, I've got uh, I've got an eight head, no no four heads. I've got, uh, it's double the size. So <laughs> it's, it's, a, uh, it's an eight head. But the, bill, the fact that we are able to think and we are able to use logic, we can actually change and realize, first realize that we are having a negative thought, having a thought that is going to hold us back. And that thought can then be converted into a positive thought. We can change our model. And that's one of the great, wonderful things about it. It's when you realize you've got a, you're running off of a model that is self-defeating, you can change that model to one where you're able to start taking steps towards more success. So pay attention to the negative thoughts, to the self-doubts that arise as you try something. And we're going to have that self-doubt, especially when we're trying something brand spanking new. Because when you take the step to try something new, you're going to go, well, I've never done this. We're going to try to look to the past. And you don't want to look to the past. You want to look forward. You want to look into the now and go, we're going to try this out. This is going to be fun. And you can have that ability. Recognize when you are being unhelpful to yourself. And when you consciously choose to change that with a positive, empowering thought, you're going to set yourself up on, on an incline and be ready to just launch. So doing the thought work and paying attention. Why am I telling myself these lies? Why am I telling myself the stories that I am telling? If I can come up with the reasons why and you can find, figure that out, you then are able to start changing those thoughts even more and changing those thoughts in a 
more drastic fashion than before. Now, sometimes you're really getting yourself stuck on some other lines of thinking. You're really getting hung up on some negative self-talk, some negative uh, results that are, are holding you back. Now, a little trick is you can actually jump onto the affirmation track. You know, like, you know, Stuart Smalley of, I, I like myself, you're bright, you're smart, and you, you know, gosh darn it, everybody likes you. And those work to a point, but there's a really big, important part about this that you need to understand. And that is when you use affirmations, you have to believe them. Like the, I have plenty of money for everything that I truly want. That works strictly because I am firmly believing that. If I didn't believe it, it's not going to work. So you can hear some affirmations that sound really good, but do they really, agree, do you really agree with that? And you can, you can agree with it. Your beliefs are just thoughts that you perceive to be true. So you can change your thought. You can have a different thought about that. And a lot of people go, no, -uh, you can't do that. You can't just change your beliefs. Well, I, I would know that there are a lot of Muslims who become Jewish and, and Christians who would disagree. And a lot of Christians who become Jewish and Muslim would disagree. And a lot of Muslims who become, or uh, Jewish Hebrews who become Christians or, or Muslim who would disagree. Those are those three types of uh, of religions are, I mean, they're all Abrahamic religion, but they all are very, a lot of times, very well stuck to their, their own line of thinking. And so if you're running into the problem of, you know, can you change your beliefs? Well, yeah. Buddhists become Christians. Christians, you know, become Hindu. Hindus become Muslims. Muslims become, you know, become whatever they want to become it's all because of what our thoughts are our thoughts are our, our beliefs are our thoughts that we perceive to be true so you can use the affirmations but make sure that you that you believe them and if you don't believe them and you're still trying to use them are you doing the kind of fake it till you make it angle that's good you can repeat that to yourself until you believe it that does help out tremendously. Now, when you're trying to come to a solution to what your problems are, Another instance that you actually want to look at is how are you going to get to whatever your solution is? That's a, that's a big one. Can you come up with a solution? The answer is yeah. And one of the best ways to do that is just visualize. Are you visualizing yourself fail? Well, that's not going to help you. That's not going to do you any good. That's not going to do your family any good. That's not going to do anybody any good if you're sitting there just always looking at uh, at how you fail or how someone else is going to fail. Start visualizing success. Start visualizing what would it be like to be successful? What would it be like to have the house that you, you dreamed of? What would it be like to have the car that you've always dreamed of? I'd love to have a, a you know, a 68 GTO or, a, you know, a 70 model Carmagia. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, those are two different styles, but still, I liked, I've always liked both types of cars. To have those, you know, it's going to take a little bit of, uh, you know, I, I, I can either look at those and go, oh, those are neat to have and have that mean nothing to me and not try to attain them. Or I can go, you know what? I kind of like that car, but yeah, I would like to see what it's going to take to get one and try to prove to myself that they, that, that works. Can you actually get that? And so you know, one of the things you want to do is ask yourself a series of questions like, where do you want to be? What does it look like when you get to whatever your goal is? 
How are you going to act? How are you going to dress? How are you going to talk? How are you going to, what actions are you going to take when you become, well, what actions is going to, are you going to take to even just get to your goal? You have those lines. How did you get to your goal? How did you achieve that particular, particular, uh, uh, overcome that particular obstacle? What were the choices that you were faced with and how did you make those choices? Why did you make those particular choices? And those are the great questions to ask yourself to help you visualize where you want to be. What does it look like, smell like, taste like? You know, activate all those, all your senses. When you're able to do that, your, your results are going and what you see and how you're questing to get the, uh, to the particular goal is going to become a lot quicker and a lot better and a lot stronger. So also practice gratitude, man. I mean, come on. Gra the attitude of gratitude is one of the greatest motivators and means of making you positive. And you can become a hell of a lot more positive just because you are willing to actually state and be in a state of gratitude. And you can do this by just, you know, one of the fun things to actually do is buy a bunch of thank you cards and write out, say you go to a, to a restaurant and you had someone who just did a really bang up job. Grab one of those thank you cards and just write out, hey, I appreciate everything that you did. You took great consideration in this. And just, you know, let them know that you are incredibly grateful for the work that you did. You don't have to just give them money. You can give them money and a card. The tip is a wonderful thing, and you can actually put it inside there just so that they know that how grateful you are for what, what they did. When you're grateful, and uh, grateful, gratitude journals are amazing tools to help you change your mindset, change your attitude in, about the world. When you have a lot more gratitude in life, you're going to see a lot more possibilities. You're going to see that you're, I am grateful for this Behringer microphone. I am grateful for the fact that I am in an office that I can actually do a podcast in. I am grateful for having the 4th of July off so that I can do great things, which is the day that I'm doing this podcast. And so it's, you have gratitude. I am grateful that I have a wife that cooks wonderful meals for me, though yeah, I may want to, I am even grateful for the fact that she has given me a stomach that would make a pregnant woman jealous. I have, I've got a gut on me. I am out of, I'm working at getting myself into shape. I am not in the shape that I want to be yet, but because I have the ability to want to go out and get myself into shape, I have, I'm grateful for the fact that I'm out of shape so that I can get myself into shape. You can see how this all rolls together and it's a wonderful, wonderful means of changing your line of thinking, changing how you look at the world. And when you're grateful, all of a sudden the world is a whole lot brighter, a whole lot sunnier, and you birds are singing, you got rainbows in the air, and I don't mean the gay rainbows either, I'm talking about actual rainbows and the sky is just a little bit bluer, and it's just a wonderful day. You also want to surround yourself with positive, and so find positive men for your, your Brotherhood of Men group. You have a group of men that you need to be spending with. That's the fourth pillar of the relaxed male is the man's community. You need to have a community of men who you spend time with time and time and time and time again, regular basis. And these guys are going to take the negative thoughts out of your head and can and re implant positive thoughts, positive means of, uh, of acting. <clears throat> so you can actually be able to see that you have positive outcomes. I gotta do
So surround yourself with those bands of brothers. You need them in your life. One, one, again, I, I, you'll hear me say multiple times in multiple different podcast episodes. The fourth pillar is quite possibly the most important pillar you need because when you have a good, strong friend, community pillar, number one, your, previous, your first three pillars happen automatically. You become more learned. You become, you start wanting to learn more so that you can share with your friends. You get yourself into shape because, hey, your friends are getting in themselves into shape too. And you're helping, you're helping your friends and encourage their friends to become better men also. You also are supporting your friends. You're getting motivational quotes. You're uplifting. They're, they're going to share with you music that get, really gets them fired up. All this wonderful stuff happens because you're with, you have these men in your, in your, uh, in your inner circle. Another thing you want to do is take, start taking proactive steps. How it's take action. Men, we are men and we need, <laughs> that sounded really weird, <laughs> but anyhow. Yeah. We are men, and one of the great things about men is that we take action. And if you can't take act, if you don't take action, you're never going to see the results that you want. But some of the ways that you can actually take action is have talk to your friends, talk to your friend, uh, let them know what you're wanting to, to achieve. They're going to help you do that. Another way is to hire a coach. Hello. I am a coach. I you can reach out to me. Go to relaxbell.com forward slash coaching and go over there. Set up a time for a consult call, and we'll sit down. We'll talk. Find out how well we mix together, and find out what it is we want to actually get worked on. When we actually have those types of, of events set in our. Uh, items set in our, our life, take those steps, take those, uh, those, the needed steps to be able to get to where you want to go and having friends, having that positive, uh, positive reinforcement group helps you with that. Now, one of the gr less fun things that's going to happen when you're on a quest, when you're doing something, when you're getting stuff done is you're going to have setbacks. You're going to fail. And you're going to fail often, and you're going to fail early often, and you're going to think that you're in a bloodborne in the bloodborne game. You're going to enter from software game because of how many times you're failing. Not that you're going to die, but you just you're failing every time, and often, and often again, and time and time and time again. You can either a give up, and that would be a failure, or you can re learn from your failure and grow from it because. Failing is not, is, there's nothing wrong with failing. It is failure. It is a learning moment, but it is failure nonetheless. And if, when you're able to see failure for being something that, yeah, it's not pleasant, but you're, you're going to get yourself back up and you're going to try it again. You're going to do what it was that you wanted to try before, and you're going to do it again and again and again and again and again. So learn from the setbacks and understand that those setbacks aren't just failures so much as they are just learning, uh, learning events. Take care of yourself. You know, sitting back, working, you know, letting your, your second pillar, the man's body, just go to crap isn't going to help your mindset at all. When you're sitting around a whole bunch of negative people and they're doing a bunch of negative stuff, you're going to fall into that also and you're not going to take care of yourself. And so when it's time to use the extra energy, you're going to you're going to you're going to struggle with that. So practice self-care. Now it doesn't mean you need to go out and get a mani pedi or anything like that. You, but you know, maybe you have a hobby that you like to do. Shift mental gears from time to time. If you're pushing real hard and you're you know and it's just you're you're making making progress but it's going a little slow what happens if you drop down a gear 
all of a sudden you're going to start finding yourself climbing a lot easier. Yeah, you're not going as fast, but you're climbing a lot easier. And you're actually probably going to climb faster in third gear as opposed to trying to climb a steep hill in sixth gear. So, and that is the same same instance. You have to slow yourself down. Take care and work on your hobbies. Make sure you do have some hobbies. That's part of the, the third pillar, feeding your soul. You have to have a hobby that you can actually use as a means to shift your 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 mind because your brain's working on one thing all the time it's going to get a little little weirded out and when you can shift it it's oh and it will start it will breathe a little bit more and then you'll notice as soon as you go back to the other uh to the original problem all of a sudden your brain's like going oh oh yeah there's here's the solution and da, 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 and away you go so also seek support when needed talking to your coaches, talking to your friends. When you have something heavy going on, talk to those those people who are within your inner circle. Professionals, if you're really struggling, got a little bit of depression going in, then go, yeah, go talk to a, to a therapist. Nothing wrong with talking to a therapist. It's, they're, they're there for a reason. If you're struggling on getting past a obstacle that's in your, in your way that you're trying to that as soon as you clear that obstacle, you're, you know, you're halfway closer to your goal, then you probably want to talk to a coach and see how you can change your thoughts. Using these thoughts and using these actions will improve your means dramatically. And all you have to do is take the time to, to do it. And it works every time, but you have to make sure that you're being intentional with what you're doing. If you can do that, you're going to find yourself with a whole lot more options available. You're going to find the success is starting to come in just a little bit easier every single time you get a win. Willing to do that, you're going to find yourself winning more and more and more. So, guys, with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let you go. I want to say thank you very much for t listening to the show, taking the time to, to hear what it is. If anything was said in here that just really just rang with you, just resonated with you, then please reach out. Share this with your friends. Share this with your buddies. Share this with your, your family. Let them know, hey, there is this show called Relax Mail, and there's a guy there who's got a lot of hair on his head, though it's receding, and that is just helping people to change how they think about life, change what is coming at them. Yeah, that divorce is, is just beating on them, and they're, they're stressing out tremendously about it. But all of a sudden, if you realize that if you change your thoughts, all of a sudden, yeah, that scary thing, isn't quite as scary anymore. It's actually a little bit easier to get to, uh, to handle. And when you are when you take the time to learn how to manage your thoughts and how to live your life intentionally, all of a sudden, even a divorce will allow you to become stronger on the other side. And if you facing a, a, a downturn, economically speaking, may seem scary, but on the other side, you are stronger. There's so much good that goes happens with small setbacks. And coaches, are, we're here to help you to change your mindset on how, what you're thinking is, is the problem that you're facing. So, guys, thank you again for listening. Y'all have yourselves a great rest of the week, and we will talk to y'all later. Till then, bye.